Hello everyone, uh, this is Dave Baldus from Renewair, uh, and we're going to be introducing the new 2015 enhancements to ERV Calc. I hope everyone uh, made it back safely from the AHR uh, Expo, uh, and as stated uh, at the show, we are introducing the new uh, enhancements that are going to take effect on February 3rd uh, uh, next week. Um, the enhancements will be a, 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 a cutover uh, in the morning of February 3rd. Uh, we'll go through what those enhancements are. The addition of the ability to export to Excel. Um, are the reports have been available, uh, you printed to PDF, but now there's going to be an option in the reports where you can export them to Excel, and we'll show that uh, capability uh, in the program. We also have the addition to limits to um, uh, airflow ranges so that uh, when you select a design airflow for an application, you only see units that are capable of meeting that airflow, um, uh, not seeing uh, an option to select units out, out of the range of that ability. The effectiveness is now provided in two common formats. Uh, the formats are going to be defined by both uh, ASHRAE 80.4, uh, the met method of testing for energy recovery ventilators, as well as ASHRAE 90.1, uh, the energy efficiency standard. Uh, there's uh, differences between those two calculation methods that both have important impacts to the building, uh, and now we're going to display both of those formats going forward. Changes in uh, handling of loads uh, uh, of the fresh air going into the building so that you see the load uh, uh, savings associated with the air going through the energy recovery device only, not incorporating other outside air load impacts to the building. Part of the driving force uh, of the changes to uh, the new ERV calc and in showing the two different effectivenesses is because of that uh, in the future there may be a certification process for uh, uh, these types of ERV or types of calculation uh, programs and uh, uh, we want to be proactive to show the different uh, uh, calculation methods um, uh, so that those uh, can be displayed and uh, in the future be a certified um, uh, calculation process. So if we help hop into uh, ERV Calc, when you go into the ERV Calc program, you're going to see uh, the same login uh, that you uh, had previously. We're not changing any logins. Your login will still work. Your password will still work. If you forgot pass your password, just click the Forgot Password button and you'll go through a process to reset your password. So if we go here, uh, go ahead and uh, log in. And if we go into our uh, projects, projects and quick calcs uh, are all pulled over from the existing uh, ERV calc. Uh, so if we go into projects, you'll see uh, your current list of projects that you have already started. Uh, when you go into any one of, one of those projects, it will automatically pull it into the new uh, enhanced version of ERV Calc. We'll go into a test project here. And if we click on the units uh, for that project, down here to ERV 21. Okay, so uh, here you see an example of uh, a unit that's designed at 1500 CFM of uh, fresh air and 1500 CFM of exhaust air. Uh, if you go to the model numbers, you'll see uh, that the list of uh, units available uh, are only units that have the capability of achieving that 1500 CFM. 
We don't have uh, the EV450 or the HE1X or the EV130 in this list because they can't achieve the 1500 uh, CFM. You also uh, don't see the uh, HE8X or the LE8X units uh, in this list either because they can't go down to 1500 CFM and so on. So we do have um, uh, uh, limitations on only units that can meet the uh, 1500 CFM uh, requirement. Uh, CA, CA and PA, uh, um, there are CA cabinets uh, where you can use multiples of those units. We aren't defining those by a range, so you'll see those units available at basically any airflow range that you have in the past. If we change the outside air requirement to 2500 CFM, you'll see I go back here to the units. And I get an error message saying that the HE2X uh, unit cannot meet the airflow requirements that you're designing for. So we click the OK. Go back to our range of units. Now we don't, don't see the HE2X units any longer. It's the HE3X unit up through the uh, LE6X as well as the RD uh, uh, 4X units and the PA6X. We also have a limitation so that you can't unbalance the air streams by more than 50%. So if we change one of these air streams to uh, 3001 uh, CFM and go back to the models, you see I get no option of selecting a unit to achieve that, uh, that level of unbalance. So we're going to go back here to 1500 uh, CFM. And again, select the HE2X INH. We'll select a voltage here. And we'll go with the one and a half horsepower motors without VFDs. Okay, so if we go down to uh, save and calculate performance data. This is where the changes uh, of effectiveness uh, show up. We have exchanger effectiveness uh, is the thermodynamic effectiveness of the energy exchange core, and that's defined by ASHRAE uh, 84. Um, uh, this is the uh, capability of the energy exchange core to transfer uh, energy. It does not necessarily matter which airstream it's, uh, uh, it is Transferring the energy, uh, it's the ability of the core to transfer energy in either airstream. We click out of that, we we'll close out, close out of that uh, calculation. You can see here, okay, the, so we have exchanger effectiveness up here. We have load savings ratio uh, down here. Load savings ratio is the calculation effectiveness as defined by 90.1. You click on that um, uh, uh, in the info button there you'll see that the effectiveness um, is the effectiveness of the fresh air coming into the building uh, and it's the load uh, reduction associated with the energy recovery device on the outside air that's being introduced to the building um, it's the load savings ratio um, of the original load um, uh, divided by the, or, or the uh, load with renewer divided by the original load. You can see at balanced airflow, the uh, energy uh, exchanger effectiveness is the same as the load savings uh, ratio, uh, winter 66%, summer 56%. When you have balanced airflow, the calculations are exactly the same, uh, won't have any impact on the calculation um, on the uh, uh, difference in the two different uh, methods of calculation. If we unbalance the airstreams again, let's say we go to 2000 uh, CFM of fresh air and 1500 CFM of exhaust air, and go down and calculate performance data. Now you can see those effectiveness numbers have changed fairly significantly. The exchanger effectiveness has gone up, 
because the ability of the core to transfer uh, energy has increased primarily in the exhaust airstream. And the load savings ratio, the energy recovery, the, the load reduction of the outside air coming in has gone down slightly because um, you have more outside air being introduced than you have exhaust air going out. Um, so that's where you'll, you'll see the difference in those effectiveness numbers. We can unbalance those in the opposite direction. And again, you'll see the uh, energy exchanger effectiveness uh, numbers. Um, uh, when we have more exhaust air that uh, uh, going out of the building than we have outside air coming in, again, those the uh, exchanger effectiveness numbers are going to match the load savings ratio. It only has an impact when the outside air, the fresh ventilation load, is higher than the uh, exhaust air stream. So we'll go back to um, 1500 CFM. CFM. Now we'll go, let's just use a uh, CA3X cabinet. We have the option of putting in how many units. If we had multiple, uh, required, needed multiple CA cabinets, we could put two or however many units that we need uh, to achieve the 1500 CFM. Um, we'll go back to one here. Go back to the HE. Uh, 2x INH. And we'll do the save and calculate performance. Okay, so we're back to our uh, exchanger effectiveness um, matching our load savings uh, ratio. Uh, we also um, uh, in addition to uh, the airflow limits as well as the exchanger effectiveness, we uh, changed the method that we're calculating the loads the, of the building. Um, in the past ERV calc, uh, there was um, outside air loads for infiltration or exfiltration or additional outside air coming in through other sources of the building that were calculated into those loads. Uh, now we're only looking at the fresh air stream. In this case, 1,500 CFM of fresh air coming in, and what is the load impact only associated with that 1,500 CFM of fresh air that's being introduced to the building. Uh, any other outside air uh, sources due to unbalanced air streams uh, would need to be accounted for in the building design through another, other uh, uh, methods. Uh, for example, if you had an outside air hood associated with a rooftop unit that was bringing in an additional 500 CFM uh, to um, uh, make up for uh, additional exhaust through our unit, that would have to be calculated uh, through uh, other methods other than ERV calc. Okay, so if we have um, our unit selected, uh, we're going to go... Um, uh, to the reports uh, for that unit. And you can see here with the unit report, we have the option of exporting that report to Excel. So if we do uh, click on unit report, you have the option at the top here of uh, exporting to Excel, or you can simply right click on this and print it to a PDF or print it to your printer. If we go to the export to Excel, and we'll do open. You can see in uh, the format that shows up uh, in Excel and so on. So this can be manipulated uh, easily 
and incorporate it into other formats. Okay, so we're going to close out of that. Go back to our unit reports. And we're going to go back to our unit uh, selection. In addition to um, uh, the changes um, in the calculation process, we also uh, incorporated a, 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 a change for calculating um, recovery effectiveness in very arid uh, conditions, very dry conditions, such as in the uh, southwest United States. Um, we changed the uh, outside wet bulb uh, condition down to 62 degrees and do uh, save and calculate. The, when we have drier outside air conditions than we have uh, uh, inside uh, conditions, the load actually turns into a humidification load as opposed to a dehumidification load with, uh, as would be typical. Consequently, when we do the load calculations, those loads come out, um, come out to be negative loads. Um, most often those loads uh, don't get incorporated uh, into the building, um, they would just be looking at the sensible load uh, recovery of that outside air that's coming in. So again, we have our exchanger effectiveness uh, calculated here. Uh, down below, we have the sensible effectiveness in both um, wintertime and summertime, and we have the latent winter effectiveness in summertime, since this is a negative load and that humidification is uh, not typically figured into the uh, a building, we, we are recommending to just use the uh, sensible of load uh, loads that are shown here. So that's another change that doesn't affect many of you except for in the extreme southwest. Okay, so uh, in addition to um, uh, the uh, changes that uh, we talked about here, uh, we also, in the implementation on February 3rd, we're also going to have the implementation of the 1.5x into uh, ERV calc. So that will be a unit uh, that is uh, selectable. Um, uh, when this cutover happens on February 3rd. So, uh, as I stated, uh, implementation uh, is scheduled to happen on February 3rd. Uh, when you log in, you're just logging into the ervcalc.renewair.com uh, website. Login's the same. If you have any trouble with the uh, uh, new enhanced version of ERV Calc, feel free to contact us uh, at the office and we'll be happy to walk you through it.